let's continue on discussing our pharmacology in association with hypertension. We'll now talk about nitrates. How do nitrates work? Nitrates work by vasodilating. They do this in the vascular smooth muscle by increasing nitric oxide. So what you see here is an increase in cyclic GMP and an increase in smooth muscle relaxation. It affects the veins much greater than it does the arteries. So what is that going to do to our preload? It's going to decrease our preload. If we're affecting the veins prior to the heart, our preload will go down. We use this in angina, acute coronary syndrome, and pulmonary edema. Some of the adverse effects associated with nitrates are a reflex tachycardia, hypotension, and headache. So how do we reduce the risk or treat reflex tachycardia? Well, as we discussed earlier, we can add a beta blocker to this medication's administration so that will decrease the risk of a reflex tachycardia. We will avoid using nitrates for patients that have a right ventricular infarction. So we want to always make sure prior to administering nitrates that we're, we're not dealing with a right ventricular infarction by using an EKG. We also will avoid it in uh, cases of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, as well as if patients are concurrently using a PD-5 inhibitor. What is the PD-5 inhibitor? Well, a good example of PD-5 inhibitor is that little blue pill, also known as Viagra. We know this in its generic name as sildenafil. Some examples of nitrates include nitroglycerin, isosorbide dinitrate, and isosorbide mononitrate. Let's continue on and look at some more cardiac medications. Renolazine functions by inhibiting the late phase of the inward sodium current which therefore reduces our diastolic wall tension and oxygen consumption. So what does that mean? Well, our inward flow of sodium is actually during that plateau phase of our depolarization cycle. So if we are able to inhibit that inward flow, that means we reduce this plateau phase, making that plateau phase gradually shallower. You can see here on the right, our late sodium channels, when they are open, allow sodium to pass through, which then concurrently will allow calcium to pass through, which will allow our sarcomeres to contract. When we administer renolazine, that causes those late sodium channels to close up. Therefore, our concentration of sodium in the cell cannot participate in the sodium-calcium transporter exchange, which means we don't have calcium in the cell to allow for contraction of our sarcomeres. This is useful in angina. It does not affect heart rate or blood pressure. Side effects include constipation, dizziness, headache, and nausea. Let's continue on with more cardiac pharmacology. Sacubitril is a medication that inhibits naprilicin, which prevents the degradation of natriuretic peptides. The natriuretic peptides it inhibits specifically are angiotensin II and substance P. So what effects would we see by inhibiting substance P and angiotensin II? Well, we're going to see an increase in our vasodilation, and we will see a decrease in our extracellular fluid volume. So we can use this when patients have heart failure, and that heart failure gives us a reduced ejection fraction as well as we can add it to valsartan. We don't use this with ACE inhibitors though, because ACE inhibitors would give us an increased risk of angioedema. So we can use the ARBs, like valsartan, to add in here for more effect, but we don't use it with ACE inhibitors. Adverse effects include hypotension, hyperkalemia, cough, and dizziness.